Hello viewers and welcome back to a new video, this time looking at the best directorial debuts. So quite simply we're looking at the best first feature films from directors past and present. Number 10 Reservoir Dogs One of the greatest directors to ever sit behind a camera, Quentin Tarantino famously got his start working as a video store clerk. Obsessed with movies, after writing screenplays for True Romance and Natural Born Killers, he concocted Reservoir Dogs, an indie film that's drenched with gore, soaked with gasoline and absolutely riddled with pop culture references. With its non-linear timeline, the film follows a group of diamond thieves whose heist has gone very wrong, but in between all the shooting and the year slicing, they still have time to talk about tipping and listen to K-Billy's super sounds of the 70s. Larry. We have been friends, and you respect my dad, and I respect you, but I will put bullets right through your heart. You put that gun down now. God damn you, Joe. Number nine, the Maltese Falcon. Shooting enough more to make it all right. Tell me, Mr. Speed, am I to blame for last night? Oh, well, you warned us that Thursby was dangerous. Of course, you lied to us about your sister and all that, but that didn't count. We didn't believe you. No, I, I wouldn't say that you were at fault. Humphrey Bogart played Sam Spade in John Huston's supreme classic adaptation of Dashiell Hammett's The Maltese Falcon, a film that is now considered the pinnacle of the private eye genre. Huston directed his debut with skill and matched the ego of star Humphrey Bogart in a film that was nominated for three Oscars, including one for Huston's sharp screenplay. The film was popular with 1941 audiences and Huston would go on to have a long and successful career as a filmmaker until his death in 1987. You will clasp your hands together at the back of your neck. I intend to search your offices, Mr. Spade. I warn you, if you attempt to prevent me, I shall certainly shoot you. Number 8 Badlands Cinematic crime and homicide have rarely been this haunting. Written and directed by a 30-year-old Terence Malick, the Bonnie and Clyde-esque Badlands signalled the arrival of a singular voice in American filmmaking. Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek play young lovers who follow up killing her father with several more murders and the unexpected fame that comes when she turns herself into the authorities. Malick prefers to meditate rather than escalate in the premise, as he's continued to demonstrate in equally poetic films Days of Heaven, The Thin Red Line and The Tree of Life. Where are you going? Number seven, The Knight of a Hunter. Well, now, what's it to be, Lord? Another widow? How many has it been? Six? Twelve? The Reverend Harry Powell, played by Robert Mitchum, has a penchant for killing his wives. But when he marries Shelley Winters, her two children, John and Pearl, prove to be too clever, especially because they're hiding a large sum of money from their stepfather. Lawton's directorial debut is an expressionistic thriller whose horror is generated as much from Harry Powell as it is by the shadows splashed across the walls. It is a brilliant and influential film that unfortunately tanked at the box office, but has since developed an audience that appreciates it for its cinematic quality. Don't never sleep. Number 6, Ivan's Childhood. After making a few brilliant short films, Tarkovsky ventured into feature filmmaking with Ivan's Childhood, an adaptation of the short story Ivan. The film's loose narrative structure uses dream sequences, flashbacks and a war-torn terrain to tell the story of Ivan, a young boy who seeks vengeance against the German soldiers who killed his family. The film garnered praise from international film audiences even though Tarkovsky would openly criticise the final cut. In spite of the director's criticism, Ivan's Childhood is a compelling depiction of youth and violence, setting the stage for the illustrious career of the Russian director. <laughs> Number five, 12 Angry Men. You want to hear your arguments? I gave you my arguments. We're not convinced. Sidney Lumet was one of the most respected directors to ever take up the craft. He gave cinema so many respected classics such as Serpico, Dog Day Afternoon and Network. 
However, his debut film 12 Angry Men is considered one of, if not the greatest, courtroom drama ever made. His cast included Henry Fonda, Lee J. Cobb, Jack Warden and more heavy hitters. His cast praised the director for his unequal preparation before shooting began, and his easy way of communicating with actors. Lumet's film is widely praised as a classic and was nominated for three Oscars. Why don't you take that stuff about the old man? The old man who lived there and heard everything! Or oh, this business about the knife, what, cause we found another one exactly like it? The old man saw him! Right there on the stairs! Number four, The Shawshank Redemption. IRS can't touch one cent. You're that smart banker would kill his wife, aren't you? Why should I believe a smart banker like you? So I can end up in here with you? It's perfectly legal. Go ask the IRS. They'll say the same thing. When Frank Darabont wanted to make his directorial debut with a Stephen King adaptation, it made perfect sense, considering his previous screenwriting credits were comprised almost entirely of horror pictures, such as The Nightmare on Elm Street 3. But he had something else in mind a soaring film version of Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption, one of King's rare non-horror stories. Leisurely paced, beautifully acted and emotionally overwhelming, Darabont's classical style owed as much to Frank Capra and John Ford as it did to King himself, and though it was widely ignored upon its initial release, it has become one of the most beloved films of the modern age. Number 3, Pater Panchali. Sachidit Rai created one of the most influential and iconic Bengali films in cinematic history. Making the best use of his production limitations, including a very limited budget, Rai created a heartbreaking examination of a poor child living in rural India. The film not only introduced Sachidit Rai to international film audiences, but it also helped construct the critically acclaimed Apu trilogy, which would follow its central character from childhood into adulthood. Number 2, The 400 Blows Francois Truffaut began a cinematic revolution when he introduced the world to Antoine Duenel, the central character of Les Quatre Sans Coup, his debut, The 400 Blows. The film chronicles Duenel's rebellious nature, which annoys his parents, irritates his teacher and lands him in a juvenile detention centre. The film garnered Truffaut the Best Director Award at Cannes, despite being banned from the festival just a year earlier, and introduced cinephiles to the French New Wave. Truffaut would never be as experimental as his colleague Jean-Luc Godard, but he still managed to capture a playful energy and a love of cinema. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honourable mentions that just missed the list. Breathless. <laughs> Night of the Living Dead. This is Spinal Tap. 10 be the top number and make that a little louder. American Beauty. Get Out. Number 1 Citizen Kane. Don't let its prodigious reputation scare you, Citizen Kane lives up to the hype. After scaring the hell out of people with his War of the Worlds broadcast, Orson Welles was able to write his own ticket to Hollywood, and what he wanted was simple, total control from beginning to end. And he got it. Wells used the opportunity to create a compelling tale of the American dream in the form of fictional Charles Foster Kane, a media magnate on the ultimate search for power. The film moved filmmaking forward by employing a flashback-heavy narrative that was formally reflected through the incredible deep focus cinematography. Now in complete control of the government of this state, I made no campaign promises, because until a few weeks ago, I had no hope of being elected. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have any suggestions? Leave them in the comments below and make sure you hit the subscribe button for new content every week.